Okay, uh, welcome in. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to do some simulations in R, specifically simulations of random walks, which are very cool, uh, very useful topic in a variety of settings, finance, physics, um, economics, I guess is similar to finance, sports, even you can think of just a ton of applications in, in a pretty cool topic. So we have some videos as well for random walks in, in other uh, playlists in this channel. So I'm going to start, this is good practice for any simulation. Specifically, I'm going to set the seed. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about this in this video. We talk about it more in others. Um, whenever a random number is generated from a computer, it's not really random per se. There's some algorithm that generates these pseudo random numbers. And if you set the seed to be, you know, in this case, we're setting it to be zero, then your results, while, you know, they look random, are going to be reproducible, which is useful if you want to go back and check what you've done. And we'll see that as well. I'm going to set my uh, simulations call n sims to a thousand. And let's say I want to ask the simple question. We're going to do a basic random walk. Um, up, you know, one step with probability one half down with one step with probability one half. Let's say I want to ask the question on average, how long does that take to hit 10 for that random walk to hit, you know, all the way up to 10. So every step up and down with, you know, up down one unit with equal probability, how long until it hits 10. And that's like a difficult analytical problem. That, that's tough to solve with pencil and paper and there are ways to do it, but it's difficult. But with R, the cool thing is that you can simulate this stuff um, kind of, kind of easily, which, which is really neat. So Let's start by establishing our results vector, which I'm going to call results. Um, it's going to be uh, just for this uh, right now, a zero vector of length uh, 1000 and sims, and then we'll get right into the loop. So four loops, I think, are just a nice intuitive way to do simulations. Um, we want to do um, uh, one to a thousand uh, loops, which, which kind of makes sense. Um, and we kind of want every step of the loop. So I'm going to initialize the random walk at some value zero. And here I'm going to do a loop within a loop. Um, so within the for loop, I'm going to do this while loop. I'm going to say while true. Um, and remember that this is just going to loop forever and ever because every time we go through the loop, it's going to check this condition. This condition is always true by definition. Um, you know, if I run true, I'm going to get true. Um, just like if I run two greater than one, I'm going to get true. But if you just run true, you get true. Um, so every time through the loop, it's going to run. And the only way to get out of this is by adding a break condition, which I'm going to do. So in this part, we're just going to actually run the random walk. So um, we're going to tack on to X. So we're going to concatenate on to X. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add onto the last element of X. So this is saying X length X, length X is just how long X is. Um, in this case, it's, it has length one. So our last element here is zero just because X is zero. But if I did something like X is one, two, three, then X length X is three because, you know, um, X has a length of three and we're going to the third, the third index. So this just gets me my last value of X and I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add, this is where the actual randomness comes in. Um, we want to uh, use this sample function, um, which is super useful, and we're going to sample from negative one and one. So C concatenating negative one and one, we're going to sample one of these values, and our probability is going to be uh, one half uh, for each one. So I'm sampling from negative one and one. I'm just sampling one of these numbers, and each has probability one half. And you know, I can just run a few of these. Ooh. Oh, I have an extra C at the end. I can just run a few of these and you can see, you know, about half are negative one and half are one, which makes sense. And I'm just going to add this on to X. So right now, you know, my original X was one, two, and three. So I sampled in this case, a one added on and I got four. And if I ran it again, maybe now I get two because I sampled a, a negative one. Okay. So we're just going to add on to X in this way. You can imagine like if I save X like this, I get one, two, three, four, run it again. One, two, three, four, back down to three, run it again, now back down to two. Um, so that's kind of how we're generating our, our random walk. And then we have to add our if condition, our break condition. So we're going to say if x length x is, so if the last value in x is greater than or equal to 10, or we can just say equal to 10, um, we are going to break. Okay. And let's uh, let's try to run it one iteration. It ran and boom, we got... Uh, we can see our random walk moved around, moved around, moved around, finally hit 10, and that's when we broke. And now we want to save how long it took to get to 10. So we just say results, I uh, assign X length of X minus one, because we're starting at this value zero, which we don't really want to count. So 
that's all set and we're going to run our code. It's going to take a second to run because you know we're running a bunch of simulations um, within each. We're running a thousand times and you know we're running a bunch of these uh, while loops within each um, kind of simulation. So it's going to it's going to take a bunch of time. We're going to talk about ways how we can make this faster or potentially slower. Um, it is taking longer than I expected. So let's just hit escape and see where we're at. Oh, we're only at I equals 21. So something something didn't uh, go right. Um, and yeah, this is actually a very good learning moment. Um, so we kind of got stuck. Like, let's look at our results vector. That was going forever. So let's look at our results vector. Um, we have, you know, 21 values. So the first like 20 converged pretty quickly. It took like a hundred, you know, runs where, you know, that, that's not too bad. The computer does that fast for our, for this, you know, X, we got stuck very, very deep. Um, you know, we went super, super deep, took us 26,000 steps to get up to 10. We probably got very, very negative, And then it took a while to get back. So it took that long to run 27 iterations. It's probably going to take a long time to run a thousand. So a way we can kind of adjust this. And, you know, if you have time in your hands, you can just let it run for a while and it, it will finish. But if you, if you want to adjust this, we can say, okay, instead the probability is going to be, let's say 0.3 of a down step and 0.7 of an up step. Okay. So this will converge much faster to 10 because the probability of an up step naturally is higher. We run this and you can see, oh, sorry. My Siri thinks I'm talking to it. Um, and you can see it ran much faster. It already converged and I get um, my vector of length. So this is telling me, you know, on the first run, it took 28 to converge. On the second run, it took uh, 28 to converge, et cetera. Um, so that's pretty cool. And we can look at all sorts of interesting statistics for it. So on average, it takes 25 steps to get to 10. Um, and we, you know, we can compare the median. The median's a bit lower because it's naturally right skewed. It's bounded um, by zero. Uh, we can look at the minimum, which is 10. So there was one time where we just straight counted up to 10. Um, and we can also look at the maximum. We can see what you know, the maximum amount of time was. In this case, it was 82. Um, and what's cool about this set seed feature is that we can, we can say, okay, which of our runs was the maximum? And we can see it's run 714. And you, know, you might think, okay, well, it's run 714, but it's already ran. We can't run it again, get that specific you know, value. But the nice thing about set seed is it allows us to kind of replicate these quote unquote random results. So here I'm going to add a condition if I equals 714 break. And when I run this again, including the set seed, I'm just going to get the same exact um, you know, random results. And this X I get, you can see has length 82, just like we planned it. And you can see that indeed it takes a long time. We, you know, cover to four, but then, and even up to five, but then we get pretty negative. We get down to negative six and it takes a while to get back up to 10. So we can actually dive deep into um, specific instances. So hopefully this all makes sense. You know, this is very simple. You can imagine changing these probabilities a bunch, you know, just for fun. Let's, let's say, the probability of a downward move is 0.7 and the probability of up move is 0.3. As you can imagine, this will probably take forever to run. I'm going to run it. I like, and it, you know, it's, it's going to clock forever. If I hit escape, I didn't even get past the first, I didn't even get past the first iteration. And you can see if I print out X, like X is, is, uh, and I plot it and I, sorry, I should have plotted another one. Um, but it's, it's almost even too big to plot. It's like it ran 25,000 times and basically went almost straight down. And this, you know, this is a topic for another uh, video, but this probably will never, you know, in most cases this is never going to hit 10. So, um, you know, you're not going to be able to simulate something like this, but, ho but hopefully something like this, but hopefully this uh, tells you some cool principles of simulation and how you can do it with random walks with very simple code, but get some, some interesting results. So we'll see you next time.